the land, Afghanistan, the war, the so-called Taliban insurgency. The U.S. Congress last spring approved an additional $40 billion for military operations, bringing the total war bill since the overthrow of the Taliban to over $300 billion. What has the U.S. gotten for its money? This year the violence hit an all-time high. It has been the deadliest for both U.S. soldiers and Afghan civilians alike. This is in contrast to the relative peace prior to 2005, when car bombs and suicide attacks were virtually unheard of. After being soundly defeated after 9-11, the Taliban presence in the countryside is strong and on the rise. Yeah, it'll make it quick. I have a new favor to ask you. The Taliban is unpopular, but few outside the country know that it pays a wage to fighters who can find no other jobs. I, I'm trying. Can you hear me now? Eight full years after NATO's presence began, unemployment yeah, remains at 40 percent, and poverty is wretched. We went to interview Afghans about unemployment. Numerous sources, including high-ranking U.S. military officers and Afghan government ministers, put unemployment at the heart of the renewed insurgency. I was wondering if Joanne or yourself would be able to make it instead of me. My Afghan colleague is on the phone with his employer to get the okay to extend his stay. We found the unemployed in legions in Kabul's city squares. We found men of every age waiting for work of any kind. The option of applying for work is non-existent. There is no place to apply. Waiting in one of the squares for work is one's best chance, but not a good one. Yeah? Right, right. The UN estimates that 35% of Afghans are malnourished. One out of five children dies before the age of five. In January of 2008, the five-star Serena Hotel in Kabul was hit by the Taliban, killing eight people. The attack signaled a major escalation of Taliban attacks on civilian targets. Attacks of all kinds had grown in number throughout 2005 and 2006. This was the first time a popular meeting and living quarters for the expatriate community had been subjected to major assault. What is the connection between unemployment and the insurgency? Why, eight years after the NATO presence began, 
does the country remain mired in poverty? This is the National Stadium, where during the Taliban's reign, public executions and mutilations took place. The gory spectacle served as both reinforcement of rule by fear and Friday night entertainment. According to a poll by ABC News, nearly 90% of the Afghan population in 2006 approved of the overthrow of the Taliban. Since that year, the popularity of the American presence has steadily declined. <laughs> I learned how different the country this is the voice of Gaif Abdul Ahad, reporter for the UK From Guardian. From your experience, do you get a sense of how the Afghans feel about the Taliban currently? Well, here is the thing. It's not that most of the Afghans I met were supporting the Taliban, but almost every single Afghan I met was so disappointed with both the Karzai government and, and with, the, with the NATO and American forces. Uh, what I mean, and again, every single Afghan I met in 2001 was so happy to get rid of the Taliban and, and, and get a, 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 a new prospect, a new future and everything. But then uh, what's been happening of poverty, corruption, I mean, poverty in Afghanistan is, is stunning. It's, it's, it's a 19th century. Yeah. A report written by Oxfam in 2008 revealed that up to 40% of non-military aid to Afghanistan went to corporate profits for foreign contractors like DynCor and the Louis Berger Group. <laughs> Unskilled labor is often imported from countries like India or Turkey rather than hiring Afghans. <laughs> They had change. We went to the places where vast numbers of unemployed men gather in the morning, hoping to be chosen for a day's work, evoking scenes of America's Great Depression. The going wage for unskilled labor 